how is it going guys and welcome to the channel now today as you can see from the title um, I'm going to be doing a part two to the common problems video that I did off of the course of VXR now if you're thinking about buying one make sure you go and watch that video first and then come back to this one um, basically on that video I did all the main common problems they have whereas this one is gonna be sort of the little the little niggly ones I do tend to suffer with but it's not very expensive thing to replace so it's relatively you know cheap to be fair so I'll run down them now Right then, common problem with these is the rear brake caliper. Now they have, have been known for either seizing up or the handbrake not working um, or basically uneven wear on your pads. That's one way to check out. They are very, very common. I'm on my second set on the rear of this in the, in the time I've owned it. Um, it's very easy to change. Um, it's just, you know, a couple of bolts, take the brake um, pipe out and stuff like that and it all comes apart. It's, it's very, very sim simple. Um, but they are quite common, however they're not very expensive to replace, so just bear this in mind guys, when you own a course of VXR, it's something you might have to do. Right then, the next one is your coil pack. Basically, um, these are very, very common for going on the course of VXR. Basically, it's just a case of taking your cover off, two bolts, a plug, pull it out, put your new one in, it's as simple as that. That's, that's how easy it is to change. They are about anywhere between up to 70, 80 pound for a replacement. Just make sure you get a, a good brand goal. Don't buy a 30 pound one off eBay as it will just, it just won't last five minutes. Um, basically symptoms of this is when your car's on boost, or when you put your phone, it comes on boost, the car will start misfiring, and jerking and everything else. So your engine management will be flashing or whatever. So, and if you, if you plug it in, it'll come up multiple misfire detected on all the cylinders. So basically that will point down to your core pack. Like I said, they are very common. I'm on my third one. I've seen numerous other people having issues with a core pack, a change of core pack, the car's fine. So just bear this in mind guys, if you do buy one. Okay guys, the next one is the seats. Now these are very common on courses for the, this material coming away from the material, on, from the actual seat itself. Um, you see it on all of them. Um, they're very, it is very, very common. I did do a video on this, how to change, your, put new clips in. You used to be able to contact Recaro and get some free clips off them to, to replace them. Um, however, now when you email them, they do send you a link for someone else and you have to, unfortunately, you have to now pay for them. Um, but like I, said, like I said, I did a video on how to change these clips. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for that video for you guys to have a look. If, you, if it's something you're having a problem on the seats, it's, all the material's hanging out, it's all coming out here and everything else. So it's a very, very cheap fix. I, I can't see the clip. I don't know how much the clips are to buy because obviously when I done mine, they were free at the time. But um, I can't see it being very much. And it, you know, if, if, if it even is 20 quid or whatever, to fix your seats it's, it's worth doing so if you like, like me every time you get in the car if all the materials are hanging out it can be quite irritating so it is a common problem with the course of vxr so if you do go to buy one and the seats are, are like, all the materials coming out do not worry too much it is very common and it's fixable for for not much money and it's it's easy like i said i, I, I did a video on how to do this and like, like i said i'll leave a link in the description for that video Right then, another common problem with these is the boost control solenoid and your map sensor. So your map sensor is located down here and your boost control solenoid is here. Um, basically, this can cause you uh, weird boost problems. With this one, it's usually the car will over boost or seem to the boost to be all over the place. Same for this one, you'll either have no boost or it'll just be, again, it'll be really erratic. They're not very exp uh, expensive to buy. You can get them from Courtney Sports or somewhere like that. Um, Nevlock also sell them. They are very, very cheap to replace. And it's just some one of them little niggles you can have where obviously you you, you're having boost problems. You have no idea why. So if you're having a boost issue, obviously check your boost control solenoid and your map sensor. Again, they're not very expensive. Um, so it's it's relatively um, an easy to change. It's literally like on this one, obviously it's a couple of bolt, couple, uh, one bolt that holds this on, a few of that lines, and that one was just one bolt as well. That's that's it's as easy as that to change, guys. Right then, guys. The last thing is the subframe on these. Um, if you watch my last video, um, it was it was one of my advisories on my um, MOT. Uh, it, was, it was rust on my subframe. Um, thankfully, it's only surface rust, so it's not gone through. But it is something I'm going to have to change in the near future. Um, again, it is a very common thing for these for the subframes on these to rust. Um, 
I don't know why they do, but they just do. And it's probably the most expensive thing in this video to buy. They're about, they're about 150 quid for a new one um, from IM Axles or somewhere along, along those lines for a refurbed one or a brand new one. So you are looking about 150 pound and it's, I can imagine it's not an easy thing to change if you took it to a garage, but if you could do it yourself, you're good, good with the spanners. I can't see it being that much of a problem. It's usually just bolts on and <laughs> bolts off so you can drop all your lower arms and stuff like that. But it's, it's unfortunately, it's one of them things I do suffer with. Um, not all of them, I'd say more of the earlier ones, but I can imagine some of the later ones that do have this issue as well. Like I said, my car's a high mileage car. I've only got surface rust on mine, it's not gone too bad. But some of them have gone quite badly, so just bear this in mind as well, guys. Something to check if you can. It's not really an easy thing to look at when you're going to buy a car, um, but it's if, it do, if you do buy a car and you do find it's, it's subframes rusted, don't panic too much it's something that can be fixed it can really be replaced and it's you know it's relatively cheap at 150 quid yeah that seem, might seem quite, quite a lot but you know for keep the car solid and make it all fresh it's, it's one of the things worth it you'd spend 100 150 pound on, on a modified part i imagine so something for that is it's not too bad so yeah that's that one well that's it for today's video guys i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope it helped you out if you're thinking about going to buy a course of vxr or you currently have one and you're trying to diagnose issues so as always guys make sure you subscribe if you're new drop a like if you enjoyed the video i always appreciate that and i'll see you on the next one